It's the NFL on EA Sports. And coming up, it'll be no holds barred between AFC South rivals. It's the Indianapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans. And it's all up next. All in all, we have a pretty pleasant December day in the Volunteer State. The chilly rain from last night has moved on. The temps have bumped up a bit here at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South, as it'll be the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Tennessee Titans. Brandon Godden joined by Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer Charles Davis. And CD, these Titans stumbled a bit last year. They were coming off six straight winning seasons, a number one seed in 2021, but they fell to seven and 10 a year ago. A major surprise because it certainly looked like they had the division locked up around midseason. The big key for them, more consistency at the quarterback position, keeping their guy healthy and being able to run the football as impressively as they've done in the past. And meanwhile, for the Colts, it's been a pretty hard fall the last couple of years, from 11 wins in 2020 to just four a season ago. How do they get back on the right path? I think they've started back on the right path with the change in the coaching staff, but a lot of it, players already on the roster playing back to the levels we've seen before. Here's the punter, Rigoberto Sanchez, on to get us started. And off we go from Nashville. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So a new face at quarterback for the Titans in 2023. It's the 24-year-old rookie out of Kentucky, Charles, Will Levis. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. Levis will look to throw on the first play from scrimmage. Throw right side, going to be taken in by Henry. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. The NFL's leading rusher in 2019 and 2020, Derrick Henry. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. Now that's a big time run. Lightning in a bottle, forget it. He exploded out of the bottle for that type of a pickup. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They'll run it again with Henry. He gets away from one. And the stiff iron made it a pretty little run, not a huge gain, but a nice chunk of yardage. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame, get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. On second down, here's Henry, and he gets it down to the 32. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. They did tell us they wanted to establish the ground game early, didn't they? They did, and a small sample size that we've seen so far, but pretty good return. Yeah, you got to like that. They've strung together a couple of first downs, established what they wanted, the running game. And guess what? They also got their lead guy running it pretty well, too. A first down carry for Henry. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. Just a gain of a couple there. And that will bring up second down. And they're getting him involved early. 
you feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved just as you said they want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game but they must like the matchups they're getting Levis throw left side here into the hands of Wesco the tight end calling a gain of three on the play and it brings up third and five now. Hey, let's face it. You can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. Now Levis. That is caught. And the Titans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game. And nice pass there. Now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner. And that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not cash in. They've got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Inside handoff, Henry. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, and now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal, would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Levis toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, so a drive that spans all that time, and yet you may only come away with three points here. Well, your defense, all right, they actually like these long drives. They get to rest over on the sidelines for a while. But when you're not finishing with points in terms of touchdowns, that's frustrating. They've got to figure out how to close out these long drives and get sixes instead of threes. And the 38-year-old vet able to split the uprights, and the Titans hit the scoreboard first. It's three to nothing. Well, they moved the ball well there on the opening series. Running game was in sync. They were knocking on the doorstep, but ultimately, Charles, they'll have to settle for the field goal. Well, they certainly were moving it well and give this defense a ton of credit. Finally dug their heels in and forced the field goal. That's one of his game partner. Will this offense look back at this drive and think to themselves, if we'd gotten six, we'd be in a better spot. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. And now a stoppage, and looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 24. They'll try and start this drive in the air. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Good work after the catch. Gets him 15 and a first down. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. He'll drop this down to Taylor. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five. At the
Now the NFL's leading rusher in 2021, Jonathan Taylor. On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole. And then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off. But you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one come back and get them the next time. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 27-yard line. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. And, partner, they're locked in man coverage out left and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. Throwing on first down is Minshew. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sat back at the 38. Marlon Davidson. What an effort from him on that play. Big tackle for a loss of 11. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Off the option, here's Taylor. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just run them and hit. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Let's see who's faster. Gay's kick is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. So a return of serve, so to speak, here on the second drive of our game as they respond to that opening field goal with three of their own. I like that. Go a little tennis on me. I huh? know you. You like to mix it up I with like sports. That. They, yeah. crack, they crack a forehand back out and they get a backhand. What was the serve? It, what was it, return on? It was a backhand. I and like a that. really good backhand. It's a nice top spin on the a little bit. Thing. A little I bit. love it. Yeah. Almost a mirror image when you really get down to it. I thought that was pretty good stuff. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. Breaks through the contact, and he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Levis now on first and 10. That's complete to Traylon Burks. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. But certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. Draw play. This is Henry. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, 
everyone's going to want to touch the football. It'll be a lot of chatter right now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. From the 42-yard line, here's a second and five. Levis. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Personal foul. Roughing the passer defense. So a roughing the passer penalty there, CD. And we know that these pass rushers love to get after rookie quarterbacks, but they still got to do it within the scope of the rules. And that time, the hit came just a little bit too late. And an official won't even think twice about pulling his flag on that one. After the penalty, it's Henry. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. We are watching a runner having a really nice game. Carrying it very well. Vision is excellent, but boy, look at the help he's getting. Offensive line, I think they're pretty eager to block for him. Here now, second and four. Again, it's Henry. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. 73 yards on the ground now for Henry. He's got a first down. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Now they'll fake the jet sweep and run up the middle with Henry. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Little bootleg here, Levis. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Here's second and 10. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And now they're gonna get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. These two teams all tied after one. Ready for the second quarter from Tennessee, and it's the homestanding Titans in possession. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Levis to throw it. It'll be a game of 16 for number 16. I think he had to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. A kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're hoping to change that right here. Henry. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one yard line and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. Extra point up and good by Folk and the lead is now 10 to three. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away.
And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. Just a lone field goal for them so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. Minshew sets to throw. A quick throw there is incomplete. Alec Pierce, the intended receiver, and now it's second down. Here's Minshew. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Mo Alley Cox. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. First and 10, Taylor now. Boy, shifts past him. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? So the ball moves from 138 to the other as they come up on first and 10. Now Minshew, throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Now a second and 10. Looking to throw it, Minshew. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. He's got room at the 30, and he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 24-yard line. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Second and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. He'll get this one to Pittman. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Quick slant caught by Pierce. And he is going to have a Colts first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running, and if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Second down and three, ball on the seven. Out to the right and complete to Pittman. And the Colts are gonna have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three yard line. And 
Taylor. Will score. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Two good drives on their first two possessions. Remember, the first wound up in a field goal, but we all know field goals aren't going to cut it in the NFL. So they're not going to be denied here, and they wind up punching this one into the end zone. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. So that one a long 11-play drive, and it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Ten apiece as the kicks away. This taken in right around the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. As this offense takes a field again, it's been a while since they've been out there. We just saw that long touchdown drive by the opposition. But remember, when this crew was out here last, Charles, they scored as well. And let's make sure we give both offensive staff some credit, and especially the offensive coordinators, because we spoke with both of them in the lead up to this game, and both were really confident in their game plans. They felt like they had scouted their opponents and focused on specific areas in practice this week to make sure that they were ready to go. And frankly, it looks like they both did an excellent job. And we'll see if those game plans can keep this streak of touchdowns going here. DeForest Buckner with a sack, the former number seven overall pick. What a quick start to the drive, but not for the team that really needed it. In only a few seconds, the opposing QB found himself on the turf, and the defense is celebrating second and long. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Off the option, here's Henry. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Here's Levis. Incomplete, but the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. These two offenses have gone up and down the field so far in the first half. Finally, finally, I say, here's a stop on third down. Here's Ty Zentner now. A deep to return is Josh Downs. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated, they both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. 58 yards rushing for him now to this point. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry, and they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. Second down, another run with Taylor. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Partner, there are strong running plays, and then there are plays where you simply outclass the defense, and we saw the latter there. They ran straight up the heart of that front for an excellent game and first down. Simply put, you've got to put more of a fight defending the middle. Otherwise, this is going to be a long game. Rush coming, and he's taken down. 
A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Running straight ahead, Taylor gets by him, and now a little daylight. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. I don't think anyone thought we'd see a run facing second and that long, and that element of surprise, I think, helped make that play so successful. Nice effort on that carry, and it took what seemed like second and impossible. Now has him within throwing range of a first down. He'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. He's going to pick up the first down and then so. And did he get in? No. Down at the one-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. It's not a surprise when you read scouting reports and watch tape because you know he's a heck of a player. But he is so difficult to get down in the open field. They just want to get him the ball and let him do his thing. They'll run here with Taylor. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Colts have taken the lead. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. A drive that time of six plays. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Taking it about the one. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And Derek Henry and the rest of the Titans offense about ready to roll again. Now he's having himself a little bit of a banner game. His team right now, though, losing. Needs a little bit of help. And I kind of equate it to a basketball game where you have the big score and sometimes your strategy is okay he can go ahead and have all of his points let's hold down everyone else and that's the way you win the game and right now he needs everyone else to start scoring quote unquote as he's been yeah and he's hoping to keep it close so maybe they can keep it on the ground not start to go through the air as much and this is going to be a titans first down as he'll take this up to about the 33 yard line and hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll try the right side with Henry. And forget that 100-yard rushing game, at least for the moment, as he'll lose yardage here and fall back under the century mark for the game. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. A shotgun handoff to Henry. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. 
The offense on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third down and 12. Levis from the gun. He right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Juju Brents. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. Third and long that time. He was trying to make something happen, but a little too risky. Well, the field tilted on him. And what I mean by that is what you said, third and long. Got to push it downfield to try to pick up the first down. Defensive backs live for this situation, and they took advantage of the young man right there. Now Jonathan Taylor and the Colts offense retake center stage. Good returns on the last drive. He hit the end zone for the second time. Good returns in this first half, really. Yeah, good returns for his team. Really good returns for the guy. You know where I'm fantasy. going. Fantasy. Darn right. Those fantasy guys who have him on their team, they're rejoicing right now, and they have a high expectation. That what they've seen already There's will continue. More. You yes. talk about fantasy a lot, but you don't. Why don't you just play? You know, I'm not good enough to play in a fantasy Stop game. It. I enjoy watching. You're an you analyst. Do it. You're an expert. I mean, you were a champ last year. Keep it up. Fifth place. Okay. Well, that's a champ in my book. That's tremendous field position that they were given following the turnover, but they've still got work to do to get to field goal range. And the coverage we're seeing isn't going to make it easy. On second down, it's Taylor. And he is going to get this close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the Titans 35. 97 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Third down and one. Now back to throw. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. The Colts send out their new kicker for 2023, Matt Gay, for the field goal. And that is no good. And this will remain a one-touchdown game. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. And we spotlight Derrick Henry now. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen and put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complementary football and get that passing game going as well. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Levis looking to throw. And this one is incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hope it didn't come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Back to throw, it's Levis. And that nearly intercepted. Boy, for a guy known for his hands defensively, that's a ball he probably thinks he should have come up with. And instead, it's fourth down. But nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend.
Now Minshew on first and ten. And his throw here is incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. From the gun, Minshew to throw. That is incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. 112 yards rushing here for Taylor. He's got a first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Minshew, first and 10. That's complete to Pierce. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. A couple of first downs have him to the 40 now on first and 10. They'll drop to throw. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. Will go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Second down and four. Out of the gun is Minshew. And this taken in by Downs. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing on first down is Minshew. He'll find a man over the middle. It's Pittman. And he's got this down to the 35. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride. Another first down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. And he hits the upright, but it caroms in anyway. Boy, plenty of distance there as he banks it in. So we've reached halftime here on New Year's Eve. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw former rushing champ Jonathan Taylor be a big time factor in that first half. He's over 100 yards rushing for the game already and found the end zone twice as well. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
Second half ready to get underway. The Colts with a lead, and they will receive the football. And he returns this to the 22. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. And they've got the lead, CD. What do you expect from them in this second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game. And the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Now a second and six. They're going to look to throw. He's going to find Taylor downfield. It's complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 39 yards there. A big one. This play is a thing of beauty when it works as designed because they let the running back slip out of the backfield and head down the sideline on a wheel route. Number one, it's easy for him to get lost. And number two, really tough for the linebacker to run with him. And this ball's right on the money and leads to a big play. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. All the option to give to Taylor here. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. From the 32-yard line now, here's second down and seven. Minshew sets to throw. Connecting over the middle of Downs. Here comes third in the length of the football. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Holding offense. What was that run? So not a lineman, but the tight end instead this time, drawing the holding call. And more and more what you're getting with tight ends are guys who are much more receiver than blocker. They may be willing, but that might not be their thing. Oftentimes, they'll be the ones getting the penalties. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. This defense can use some more of these types of plays. How about him reading it, driving on the football, and he's right there for the pass breakup. The Colts send out their new kicker for 2023, Matt Gay, for the field goal. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And this is off the left upright, and it comes back, it's no good. And the lead will hold at 10. So distance not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. Always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. No such luck there for him. And because they couldn't hit the long field goal, they are set up nicely offensively at the 41, first and 10. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. They keep it with Henry on first down. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. 
Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Second down, here's Levis. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Phillips. Seven yards there and a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 16 yards there, a Tennessee first down. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. In motion is Phillips. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. A nice effort and an even nicer stop from Quiddy Pay. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Levis to throw it. That is caught. And the Titans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll try and run for it with Henry. And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Derrick Henry, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Titans have cut it back within a score. You think back to some of the great goal line bruisers of the past, the Earl Campbells, the John Riggins, the Marshawn Lynches. I think you can put Derrick Henry right in that group as he scores there with another patented Derrick Henry run. Now Fulton for the extra point. It's up and good, and the lead's now down to three at 20 to 17. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10, just shy of the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Here's Minshew. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Give him credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. Now they face 
a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Looking to throw it. Minshew. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. Now Minshew. And his throw is incomplete. Pierce the intended target there. And that'll bring up second down. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. They'll look to throw. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Derrick Henry trots back out there and gets ready to go. Handful of carries last time out there. Finished it off, Charles, with a short touchdown run. Yeah, and that's pretty nice for him to be able to do that because normally where they were on the field, it's going to take some muscle to get in there, right? It's going to take some power because things are so stacked up, well blocked, and he was able to get into the end zone somewhat safely. Yeah, that's the thing. Several of those carries last drive, he had some good holes, some good options. They begin with Henry, and he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that, and that really chips away at your confidence. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. They'll run it again with Henry. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Levis sets up to throw here. I uh, he had a man over. Open, but he missed him and it's incomplete well the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less we have to be able to convert and I guess every team would say that Charles but an opportunity missed there what they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point and they like some matchups that they had thought they could exploit them unable to do so on that play and on fourth down on is the punt team sending this one away take it from just outside the 30 and just a net of 31 here, 40-yard punt, nine on the return. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throw taken in by Taylor, left side. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. I like the play design there. They occupied the defense downfield. Everyone trying to account for someone 
but unfortunately, they didn't account for the running back slipping out of the backfield, and he was absolutely unnoticed and wound up getting big yards on that play. From the gun, it's Taylor. They juked him. Down to the 41. I would say that's what you call a whole lot for a little, huh? When you bust that move out of the bag, you hope for more than four yards, but hey, four is what he got. From the 41, here's second down and seven. He'll look to throw. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 31-yard line. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle, but give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Now second and nine. Off play action, it's Minshew. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive, and he had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. Back to throw here. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. Back to throw now on first down. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Josh Downs from 10 yards out. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And this taken in at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Titans now just about ready to take over. And really, Charles, not much of a surprise that they're losing. They just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game. And as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. Exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, they've got to find some type of a play, multiple plays, that puts the ball in the air it allows for them to have some success. Second down and six now. Running from the gun with Henry. 
fights through it. And bulldozing his way through. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. Thought they were going to have him down a lot earlier, but he was able to shed that tackle. Shows the value of the weight room, doesn't it? Shows the value of the attitude when you run the football. Don't go down easily. Break a few tackles. Gain some additional yardage. A first down carry for Henry. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Only a yard on the gain there as time will run out on this third quarter of play. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Nashville. It's Titan football here as they trail to begin the fourth quarter. Levis now on second down. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. A gain of 18 and a new set of downs. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter, picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time, and that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. Henry up the middle. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Another nice gain, 16 yards there at a first down again. He finds his way into the secondary again on this drive. They might want to try getting him down a little closer to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, what do they call that third level run? First level being the D line and linebacker second level in the secondary, the third. When you block it up well and you make the secondary do all the tackling, that will wear on a defense. And it's caught. A gain of seven that time, second goal. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? Henry will take this into the end zone for a Titans touchdown. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. On for the extra point is Folk. And the lead is down to a field goal now. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Colts taking the field again, running back Jonathan Taylor at center stage. He has been a factor in a multitude of ways, over 100 yards rushing. He's approaching that number in the receiving category, too. And you know why I've always respected guys who can have these types of games? As a runner, you're going through a pile. People are raking in the football all the time. Your hands take a beating. Okay, and to be able to still go out and catch the football in the open field after going through that, that guy's dynamite. He's been dynamite in this game so far. We'll see defensively if they have an answer because they need to come up with something. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just float from his D tackle position in order to make that play. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and get the football right back because your friend, old momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, 
guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Minshew throwing on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. Let's go, man. Let's go. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size... This intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Minshew's throw is brought in by Pittman. And Pittman going to have a coach first down as a tackle made at the 42. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Now Minshew on first and ten. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So here's a first and 10 now, down inside the 20. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss. And they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. Touchdown, Colts! Mo Alley Cox, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts will add to their fourth quarter lead. Well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, they absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. start this drive out on the ground. 
And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Common. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Kenny Moore, and his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted, but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Off the option, here's Taylor. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, the offense has had a big day. He's been great running the football, but I don't think anybody liked that last result. No, they didn't like the last result at all, but they have to look at it in total, don't they? They've had a big day running the football. You take an occasional loss or an occasional bad play along the way, but all in all, they have to like what they've done. That's what they needed. It's an eight-yard gain, and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. They'll set up a throw. That's going to be caught by Downs. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with the bigger guy to try and use size? Can I go with a, try go with a quicker guy and sometimes you even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Second down, another run with Taylor. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. On third down, here's Taylor. And Taylor, I don't think he got there. No, he did not. Unable to break free, and he's Mark Short. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. I apologize in advance, partner, but the v feeders on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. And Gay knocks this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So that may be not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist, but time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And the Titans getting set to go.
So first and 10 now from the 30. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Those short little routes probably going to be open. The defense, they'll let those happen, especially when they can make an inbounds tackle. Yeah, where's Coach Madden when you need him? He always talked about taking what the defense gives you, but sometimes you have to know when you have to take more. That was one of those situations. Back to throw, it's Levis. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Derrick Henry, the intended receiver, out of the backfield. And it's third down and two. Levis back to throw. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. A good pickup there, 26 yards. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. On first down, Levis. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. So five yards here, five on the play, and it's second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Levis from the gun. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. The defender certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield. There was a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage. And that throw had no shot. From the 21, it's second and 10. Here's Levis. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Levis to throw it. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. Working the sideline there. Good round, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. That's to Burks, and he's got it. Touchdown, Tennessee. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Titans have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Coaches must really like to see that from the quarterback because he's had the interceptions in this game, but they're able to connect on the touchdown pass. And teammates love to see that because they know that they miss blocks during a game, but they come back and make them later on. They miss tackles, right? They miss making plays, but the spotlight is magnified on your quarterback. And when he stands up to the pressure and comes back and throws a touchdown pass after throwing some picks earlier, they feel great about that guy. And likewise for him personally, as a rookie quarterback, has to give him more confidence. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. 
After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you've got another thing coming. Yeah, and by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. down to the final two minutes and we've got a one score game so the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset they've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off and a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46 and now right out of the two minute break we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They go to the ground again with Taylor. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11, probably crashing the line here. On the handoff, this is Taylor. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. now a third and four out of the gun is Minshew pass taken in by his big tight end and he is going to have a Colts first down and that should be the one that finishes this game off they've been moving the ball well but this drive was in danger of stalling out fortunately this is a nice throw here and they're able to pick up a new set of downs The Colts in victory formation now as they take the knee. Minshew down to a knee, victory formation, and that should be just about it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. 